Chief of Staff Reince Priebus is out as the upheaval at the White House continues. We do know that at least five people are hurt. We're still working on getting more information. And storms move through the area, dumping several inches of rain and causing some flooding when you can expect things to dry out. But he agreed to talk to me because he wants the public to hear his side. You know, these Kosciuszko County citizens indicted him early last year. They also made this decision here today. $36,000. Why? I have no words. I don't get it. Other than a collectible, I, I don't think get that it. like your shoes, I'm, my shoes, you can't see them. Yeah, I'm like, oh, they're 30% off they're of the like store. They're like $20. New at 10, local groups in Michigan are discussing the impact of the new GOP health care bill. <laughs> Early voting is already underway at the skillet. And official voting, though, kicks off this Friday. There will be a ticket booth, red, white, and blue flowers. Do not eat the tacos. <laughs> New at 10, the Mishawaka City Council approved a tax abatement for a local company. WSBT 22's Nico Burton is at the live desk. Nico, how many jobs are we talking about here? Suzanne, 200 jobs to be exact. New at 10, the council also approved a zoning change for Portillo's. The popular Chicago chain is known for its hot dogs and Italian beef sandwiches. The restaurant will be built near Cheddar's on Main Street. It will include a two-lane drive through Right now, Portillo's has only one other Indiana location in Maryville. It plans to open a location in Fishers as well. A bar on South Bend's west side got a vote in favor of it staying in business today. Friendly Confines on West Dunham Street needs a special exception to operate as a tavern. That would also allow the bar to reopen its patio. The zoning board approved that today. Now it's up to the Common Council. Some neighbors have fought to close the patio and are now fighting to close the entire bar. Other neighbors say the bar is helping rebuild the neighborhood. The owner says the city should support local businesses. And it's a business that's doing well in the city. Part of that exception, the owner has agreed not to have live music on the patio, and it will close that patio at 11 p.m. Heather, thank you. There's a big step in tackling Indiana's opioid epidemic. Governor Holcomb announced five new treatment centers in areas that he calls underserved. Those centers will be in Allen, Johnson, Monroe, Tippecanoe, and Vigo counties. The five sites are based in or near counties where naloxone use is high. That's a life-saving drug that can reverse the effects of an overdose. The new centers will begin offering services by the end of June 2018. Business owners in New Carlisle have new answers about ongoing U.S. 20 troubles. An INDOT spokesperson says a main artery into town will reopen in a couple of weeks. Crews are back at work on U.S. 20 after draining water from under the roadbed. INDOT says Norfolk Southern owns the right-of-way for the viaduct and asked for a dewatering plan before that work could continue. The project was supposed to be complete at the end of May. Downtown business owners say they've lost up to 50 percent of their sales. I completely understand their frustration. I know that uh, this uh, project has been a big headache to them. INDOT says the project should be done by the end of this month. Indiana and Michigan are two of the 44 states refusing to fully comply with a request by the new federal panel investigating voter fraud. New at 10, WSBT 22 national correspondent Michelle Macaluso looks at why states won't hand over data to the federal government. President Trump's latest executive order investigating voter fraud is hitting a roadblock. Well, ultimatum tonight from the Trump administration still had a 10 why the president says the rest of the world needs to help deal with threats from North Korea. Plus, Volvo announces plans to include electricity in all its motors in just two years. Why the car maker is making that change. Now at five, an infamous vehicle is back in the spotlight. The Bronco that carried O.J. Simpson is for sale. Tonight it makes its second TV debut. And the Notre Dame football team takes the field in Chicago. Learn when they'll face Wisconsin at Soldier Field. Plus, we have an exclusive look at how South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg plans to address homelessness right now on WSPT 22 News at 5. New at 5, it's a program Mayor Pete Buttigieg says is preventing chronic homelessness in South Bend, and it's all for free. WSPT 22 was the only camera to tour Project Homecoming with the mayor. WSPT 22's Hillary Powell gave us a first look earlier today on Twitter. Right now she joins us live in South Bend. Hillary, this is a health clinic that matters in a big way because of its location. We are continuing to follow breaking news out of France. Police say a man intentionally drove into people eating pizza at a restaurant just east of Paris. Right now, they do say that they have no reason to suspect terrorism as a motive. 
An eight-year-old girl was killed and at least five other people are hurt. We'll continue to monitor this story and bring you updates as it becomes available. President Trump returning to the White House to talk about the Charlottesville attack. One woman was killed during a series of clashes between white nationalists and counter protesters. The suspect is accused of ramming his car into those counter protesters. Police say the suspect was attending the Unite the Right rally. It was a protest against plans to remove a Confederate statue. Karen Kafer reports that the president faced intense criticism over the weekend for failing to explicitly condemn the role of white supremacists in the deadly incident. Happening in about two hours, a vigil in solidarity after the Charlottesville attacks. You can join in on this. Organizers are calling it a peaceful gathering in support of the Charlottesville community and our community. It's happening at the John R. Hunt Plaza at the Morrison South Bend. It starts at 7 o'clock. Happening right now, South Bend schools taking new safety steps as kids get ready to go back to school. Some of those buses will now have exterior cameras. They'll record people who don't stop when kids are getting on and off the bus. WSBT 22's Danielle Kennedy is live tonight in South Bend. Danielle, even police are saying that this is a big problem. Many of you will be spending those last days of summer at some local beach town. Here's a live look for you in South Haven. A great night to stroll outside or maybe have dinner on the patio. And here's another live look for you in St. Joseph. WSBT 22 meteorologist Abby Wepler is here. Abby, just a great day to be at the beach today. The woman killed in a deadly home invasion has been identified as Carla Jean Lewis. The FBI has confirmed they are now involved in this investigation. The Berrien County Sheriff's Department says the two suspects should be considered armed and dangerous. Investigators say the suspect stole a car from the victim's Niles Township home. Police are now looking for a Mazda CX-9 with Michigan license plate. The number there, CMY. 3721. They believe that car is dark in color and a black or a blue. Before that car, though, was stolen, police say Lewis and her husband came home to find the suspects in their basement. Lewis was shot and killed. Her husband was not hurt. All this was playing out inside a home on Lawndale Street. Well, a possible gang shooting at a drag racing event in Wisconsin. Police say three men from Illinois were shot and killed last night at the event. Police say the victims were known gang members, and investigators are looking into the possibility that the shooter is in a rival gang. More than 5,000 people were at that event. Police are still searching for that gunman. Happening right now, a top U.S. military officer has a warning for North Korea. He says the U.S. is ready to use the full range of its military capabilities to defend itself and its allies, but also said that they're seeking a peaceful resolution. He said this during a trip to Seoul today. North Korea has threatened to lob four intermediate-range missiles into the waters near the U.S. territory of Guam. And this is some new video in from Guam. Here you can see people holding signs promoting peace. The governor of Guam is reassuring the island's roughly 160,000 residents that they are prepared for anything to happen. The new Notre Dame football season is right around the corner, but a future Notre Dame football game is creating quite a buzz today. WSBT 22 Sports Director Pete Byrne joins us now at the Live Desk. Pete, thank you. The Chicago Air and Water Show, just five days away. New at five, the South Shore is making some changes for the big event. It's adding an extra westbound and eastbound on Saturday and Sunday. The extra trains will not serve Hudson Lake or South Bend. Alcohol will not be allowed on all trains this weekend. Bikes will also not be allowed on trains during the air and water show. The Berrien County Youth Fair is happening right now. You can find all the exhibits, food, games, and entertainment in Berrien Springs. But organizers say the fair is much more than that, especially for the kids taking part. Our motto is along with the demolition derby, Brothers Osborne will perform on Wednesday night. Tomorrow is kids night and will feature free shows by Circus Continental. Admission for adults is $7. Kids 12 and under are $4. The fair goes through Saturday. Well, helping Hoosiers get high paying jobs at 530, the plan to make that happen. But back here at five, looking to save a bit of money? Consumer Reports walks you through ways to cut that hefty cable bill. And this one, sure to brighten your day. Some police officers going viral tonight for their skills in the swimming pool.